Recently, I've been doing a ton of Lyft and Uber. So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you exactly how I made just under $300 in only nine hours of working. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you're using both Lyft and Uber and that both the apps are running at all times because that's going to give you the biggest selection of rides to choose from. And sometimes Uber has really good surge pay while other times Lyft has really good streaks and really good challenge bonuses. So using both is gonna optimize the amount of money you can make in the shortest amount of time possible. Another Another really good thing about Uber is you get Uber Eats orders at the same time. And that can be nice if you're wanting a break from talking to people and sometimes the orders are really good. And also it can help combat the slow times of the day for ride share. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you're going out and starting your shift at around five or six in the morning. I've come to find out that the morning time is the absolute busiest time of the day. That's when a lot of flights leave to the airport so you can catch a lot of rides. Now the third thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you're tracking your miles. Because you're gonna be driving a ton of miles, you're gonna want those tracked so that you can use them as a tax deduction. Because on this day I drove 400 miles, I was able to write off basically all of the income I made so I don't even have to pay taxes on any of that $287 that I made. That's going to help you profit a lot more. If you guys need an app to track your mileage, you can download the Solo app using the link I have for you down below in the description. It automatically tracks your miles so you don't even have to worry about it. And they have a bunch of other great features that you're gonna to wanna to check out. So when you use that link to sign up you're going to be getting a bonus ten dollars let me tell you you're going to need those miles kept track of because they come in really handy when it comes time to file your taxes the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're hitting up the hot zones in your area on the lyft map and on the uber app there will be little pockets of like surge pay essentially where you get a little bit bonus if you accept a ride in that area another really hot zone which a lot of you guys probably already know but you're going to want to do lyft and uber as close to an airport as possible because that's where the majority of rides are going to come from and they usually pay out pretty well especially if you're driving long distances you're gonna get some really high orders sometimes you even get pretty successful businessmen or business women that you're driving around and they usually tip you pretty well like for example it started to slow down around noon for me so this is what I did all right so we are now just under six hours of the way through this shift and we are at about hundred seventy dollars now some tips haven't been factored in yet so it might be a little bit more than that but that's about an average of $30 an hour. So we're absolutely doing great. Things have slowed down a little bit, so I don't wanna get my hopes up too much. But anyway, we just pulled into the airport actually. We're waiting on a ride. Haven't gotten one in about 10 minutes, so we'll see what happens. And that led to me getting a ride for $37.49, and it only took me 38 minutes to complete. So you can see what I mean by the airport being a great go-to if things get slow. Number five is you're gonna wanna try and catch as many streaks as you possibly can. Now streaks are only with Lyft. They don't apply to Uber. And so that's actually why I like doing Lyft a lot more. So these streaks are when you accept three rides consecutively in a row and you get a bonus pay from that. Usually it's around 12 to $18. So that can really boost up your hourly pay and help you hit that $300 in a really short amount of time. Now the sixth thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you're not taking rides that take you into slow areas or to areas where you're not gonna be able to get a ride back. Now there's some cities by where I do Uber and Lyft where if it takes me over there like Twilla which is about 45 miles away from where I live or Park City is also another one. Sometimes you get rides that take you clear out of the main area and those can be really good because they pay out really well. But if you're not gonna be able to get a ride once you get to that area, then it's not gonna be worth it because you're gonna have to travel all the way back making no money. I don't know what cities you guys are gonna be doing this in, but make sure if you're accepting a ride that's a very long distance, make sure you can get a ride that'll take you back closer to where you're wanting to be driving around. Number seven is one of the most critical tips I can give you guys on how to make $300 as quickly as possible. Now, obviously I did it in nine hours, which is over $30 an hour. And I think this is possible for a lot of areas. Yes, but this is probably the most important tip and that would be to understand your passenger. And what I mean by that is there's a wide range of people that you're gonna be picking up. So some people like to just sit in the back seat. They got their headphones in. They wanna just listen to their own music or watch a video on their phone or whatever. And so if that's the case, you're not gonna to wanna to sit and try and make conversation with them. That's just gonna annoy them. They're probably not gonna tip you. I've had this happen to me before where I get in a Lyft or an Uber and I'm just trying to watch a video on the 20 minute drive and they're constantly trying to make conversation and I'm just getting annoyed because I'm having to 
pause my video and all sorts of stuff. But then there's other times when I get in the car and I actually am in the mood for a conversation or maybe they mention something that sparks my interest, then I'm fine to make conversation with them. So you'll see a lot of different people. If they get in, they're kind of just looking at their phone. They don't seem like they want to be bothered. Then just turn the music down a little bit and maybe ask if it's too hot, too cold in the back seat. Ask them if you can adjust the temperature and then just let them be. You're not going to want to bother them because then they're probably not going to tip you. Like take this ride for example. This guy got in, didn't really say much, and was looking down at his phone. So I figured it was early, he was probably tired and not really up for small talk, plus it was only a 15 minute drive, so I just decided to sit there and let him do his thing. And as you can see, this led to him tipping me $4.22. Not too bad for a 15 minute drive. And then on the flip side, if someone comes in and they're trying to make conversation, and you're the one who's just staring at the road, giving short answers, not really paying attention to what they're saying, then that's also gonna affect you negatively. So if the person's wanting to make conversation, make sure you understand how to do that. Make sure you can be really talkative. Make sure to ask them questions about themselves. A lot of people like to talk about themselves. So that's just what I do. Try and talk about things that you think they might be interested in. And then maybe you might make their day and they give you a really big tip. And that's gonna help you get closer to that $300 a lot quicker than having people that don't tip you all day. This is another good example. This guy started off being on his phone, then towards the middle of the drive, he started looking up, making small talk, so I talked to him about his work. Oh, okay, sounds good, I'm awesome. All right, yeah, so um, if you're an attorney, what brings you out here? Just some military stuff over four dollars. Okay. Now the last tip, tip number eight, which is kind of one I just have for myself, and that would be to try to not take breaks and get your shift done all in one fail swoop. Like, you're not gonna wanna break up your shift too much because I've come to find out it makes it a lot harder to make money because you're having to drive back to your house every time you stop one of your shifts. So I like to just get it all done in like the eight to 10 hours that I can do it in. And this also helps me get done before the traffic hits. So if I just go all the way through from like 5.30 and I can get done at around 2.30 or three, then I don't have to drive around and sit in traffic, which is kind of like the 8B tip is to avoid traffic because that's just gonna slow you down and it's gonna be frustrating only getting like one ride done per hour. So I would just say try and get your shift done as quickly as possible before that traffic hits and then you should be in pretty good shape. Well, so far we are absolutely killing it. We've only been at it for two hours and we've made just under $69. So I'm taking my first tiny little break right now because I gotta go to the bathroom so bad. And we actually just got our first Uber Eats order. It's a package delivery, a pretty good order, $14 and it says it's gonna take like a little over 30 minutes. So after this, we'll be at what, like $83 in about two and a half hours. That is what I call a successful day so far. So there you guys have it. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, make sure you guys subscribe. I've been doing a lot of Lyft and Uber lately, so I'll probably be doing more and more videos about Lyft and Uber. I think it's a lot better than DoorDash right now, to be honest with you. So I highly suggest if you haven't signed up for these already, sign up and see how good it is in your area. Also, I just created a TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So if you guys wanna follow me over on those platforms, I'll be talking a lot more real estate stuff and a lot more business ideas over there. And that content won't be uploaded on YouTube. So if you wanna catch that, make sure you go follow me over on those. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.